Okay, then I'm going to call this meeting to order and begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the Okay, we have two hearing public hearings planned tonight. We are going to um, start with the district-wide safety plan hearing. Um, the way we're going to do this is similar to the way we did the budget hearing. We have the questions that were emailed in to our um, district clerk, Debbie Potter, that I believe we'll begin with. Then if any attendees have a question or comment, um, raise your hand and um, Dr. D'Angelo will move you to a panelist to make your comment, okay? <coughs> So, um, just Rachel, uh, explain the raise the hand. Um, uh, down at the bottom of the, um, the Zoom meeting, well, it, I guess it depends what device you're on. If you're on you a gotta, laptop, you, should, you gotta open up participants. Yeah, you gotta open up participants, and then next to your name, you should be able to raise your hand. I believe yeah. if you're on an iPad or, um, a tablet or a phone, you have to like kind of tap it to get the, the top screen in order to raise your hand. And sometimes if you don't see the raise your hand icon, there's three dots, ellipses, where you click on that and that will give you more options. Okay, um, so let's begin with questions for the district-wide safety plan hearing. Um, Debbie, did you have a, a question that was emailed into us? Actually, I have it. Um, okay, go ahead. So um, as per the requirement, we've um, posted the uh, notice that we were having a public hearing on our district-wide safety plan, uh, as we've done in previous years. And as a result of that, we had one um, person from the public, Mr. Dave Laveau, uh, indicate a suggestion. Um, he is say suggesting that in the area that's labeled emergencies include, but are not limited to, that we also include um, train slash railroad, which would be very um, specific and unique to Chatham situation. And School board. and I, I believe that um, we should entertain that as a modification. I think it's totally appropriate to add it to this list. Um, I think so too. Just yeah. to add the train slash railroad to the emergency. To the bulleted mm -hmm. list of sections. Right. And now remember, the board is not going to vote um, tonight. Um, this is just uh, to hear public comment. Um, what you will do at the reorganization meeting, um, should you agree to add, modify this item, we will add that and present it to you at the organizational meeting for annual adoption. Would you read that one more time, please? So in the plan, there's an area or category that says emergencies include, yeah. but are not limited to. And it's a list of bolded items like okay. air pollution, flood, um, yeah, I read, I read that, but what's the new so, one? Um, this gentleman, Mr. Laveau, is suggesting we add one called train slash railroad as a potential emergency. Mm -hmm. I think a good suggestion. Do we want to go around and get consensus to adding that? We okay. will uh, need to talk to further discuss the uh, train slash railroad. This has been a uh, topic for a long time. Um, we've ha tried to get people from the railroad and, uh, and um, Muriel can uh, remember some of the heated uh, conversations, but um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we should look back in some of our notes when we get to uh, discussing the railroad from uh, years past. Well, let me, so this is simply just to list it as an item mm -hmm. in the district wide safety plan, the, the plan that's publicly available. Craig, I think what you're speaking to is, um, as we get to build our emergency response plan, okay, make sure that that's an item that's adequately addressed. Exactly, and all right. We have had discussions with our um, security consultant, security and safety consultants uh, in terms of that particular issue. Does everybody understand that it's just adding train slash railroad to that one section, the emergencies included but not limited to section? Right. Okay. Right. 
Yep. Okay, so Muriel, are you for or against that? Four. Okay, Pat, how about you? Four. Matt? Four. Meg? Four. Craig? I think, we, I think we need, I think we, before we add it, we need to talk to our attorney because there was something about adding that in the past. So, um, to, to the district wide emergency plan. Yes. And I can't tell you right now. I can't remember exactly why we were supposed to stay away from that whole deal. I don't know if, uh, Mike can remember or Muriel or Lucas even, but there was something from our past um, that prevented us from including that. And I, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember. So, I mean, um, I don't know if we um, approve that right now and then find out why we can't, if that's real, real smart. It's simply a public hearing, so we could just entertain that as information at this point. I could do a little more research with um, our legal uh, advisor, and then we can certainly um, decide at the reorganization meeting whether we want to add it or not, or delay right. the approval of the plan. And, and to be honest with you, Sal, uh, the PAM may not have the problems that our past uh, law firm had. But, um, Mike, do you remember any of that discussion in the past? I wasn't I wasn't there for that piece. Okay. Muriel? <clears throat> yeah, I do. Um I, I do remember not including them, but I didn't know th this seems a very small thing to be putting in the in the uh safety plan itself. But I have and, no problems. I, I, we're I, not voting on it tonight and no, I, I, would, I know. I, I would I, let Sal do I'd let Sal do the research and I think it was a small term, but it opened up a huge problem. Yeah. Uh, down let's the road. Be, let's be cautious and um, yeah. let me get to uh, okay. Pam, Pam may not see any new problems with it that our old uh, law firm saw. Okay. Uh, so I just, you know, if we want to move on and, and tentatively include it, then I'm for it. But uh, we do have to research. Okay. Why, why I hadn't been there in the past. Okay. And does it have to go on the July 7th? organizational meeting is does it have to be approved at the next one is i guess my question i i know there's the requirement for the the public notice in the hearing as to whether you adopt it in the july or the following meeting i will check on that i would okay. think that's less problematic than in the past districts did not have um it posted and did not go through the um the, the uh, process of a public hearing Okay. It, may be a real, it may be a real simple answer. Okay. Does that sound good? So we'll look into it more, and uh, if we're able to include it on the July, July 7th, I think it is meeting. I guess we'll move forward. Um, for the attendees, was, that was our only email question, right? That's correct. Okay. For the attendees, if you have questions or comments now on the district-wide city plan, if you could raise your Zoom hand so we can uh, make you panelists. Any questions? Okay, and doesn't appear we have any questions. Uh, may I say, uh, um, I was not asked, but I would like to indicate that I am for it. Okay, thank you, Denise. I think we're going to do a little bit more research and then either, uh, depending on where that research right. leads, bring a discussion and approval. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, so at this time, um, can I have a motion to adjourn the district-wide safety uh, plan hearing? Motion. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're going to move right into the code of conduct public hearing. Um, do we have any email questions? To begin with? We don't. We don't. Okay. Um, so do any of the attendees in public have a question or comment? Okay. I'm not seeing any raised hands. Um, so can I have a 
motion to adjourn the code of conduct pu public hearing. Motion. So moved, Denise. Can I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and call a regular meeting to order. Um, can I have a motion for approval of the present agenda? So a motion. Moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And we are going to move into um, the board recognition section of the agenda. And for the first two, I'm going to hand that over to Dr. D'Angelo. Thank you. Um, this is a little awkward and strange because we typically would do uh, this in person. So it's not to detract um, from its significance uh, for the meaning behind our recognition or acknowledgement of, these, of the service of these employees. But this evening, it is my pleasure to recognize three of our retiring employees. Um, they actually represent three different areas of the district. First, we have uh, Mr. Steve Silverman, a longtime science teacher, uh, has, has, has celebrated 30 years with us. I know many of you uh, know Steve. Uh, he has performed outstanding for us. Our student results um, have, have been stellar, uh, including the physics program that he's run, and he is now um, I guess as of today, officially retired. So we'd like to thank Steve for his dedication and his service. He will be missed. Uh, second, uh, Susan Mancini, a bus driver, also retiring. She um, served us for 12 years. Um, we certainly appreciate uh, the hard work that our drivers do to make sure that our students get to and from school safely. And uh, many of our drivers uh, stepped up during our COVID closure and delivered food to, uh, to our students. And we are certainly grateful and we wish um, Suzanne um, good health in, and a pleasant retirement. And last but not least, uh, Stephen Nito, um, our director of facilities, who just also recently retired. Steve um, served us for 10 years. Uh, he was a valuable part of the operations and maintenance team. He helped us, uh, at least in my tenure, bring together the uh, current capital project. Um, many mornings, Steve and I um, at 5 a.m. discussed whether we could uh, open or close school because of snow removal. And I don't remember an occasion where um, the answer was that our property wasn't ready um, to, for, for um, students to arrive if we had chose to do so. So we'd like to also wish Steve um, good health in his retirement. And that, that concludes the um, recognition of our retirees for this school year. Congratulations to all of them. I had Silverman when I was in school, so well earned. <laughs> Did we have electricity then? Oh, wait. <laughs> I used to have to jog to school. <laughs> you used an abiscus for, or abacus for math? Um, the... And we will, we do have certificates for these employees and um, we, we will mail them out at this point. Um, so they'll have, 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 have that. The second, um, I guess I have to do this. Um, honoring of a departing board member. Um, I, uh, our, our wonderful current president, Rachel Galvin, um, after serving three years with us is um, certainly not retiring, but leaving the board. Um, <laughs> I, from, from a personal perspective, it's been a pleasure to work with Rachel. Um, what I love most about her is we don't always agree. Um, and, and that's made things better. She pushes me and I push her and uh, we certainly have learned from each other. And, and I appreciate that. Um, as you as board members know, um, it's a tireless job. Um, meetings and uh, phone calls and emails and staying up to speed. And I think often the public uh, doesn't see the countless hours that all of you put in to um, make sure that this district is as good as it can be and the commitment that you have to the community and to the students of Chatham. So on behalf of uh, the administrative team, the superintendent, and I know the entire board, um, we really appreciate your service. And we know you won't be a stranger. Um, 
and, and we, I mean, we wish I was, but <laughs> well, no, we can't have everything. But uh, no, we we I certainly appreciate um, your service. We we when you can leave something better than you found it, it's you should be uh, find a sense of accomplishment. You know, a, a particular note the the um, board uh, handbook and a number of other policies and procedures um, organizing um, the uh, make sure uh, organizing um, our materials and presentations. A lot a lot of good has come from your work. So thank you. Thank you. And we have a certificate for you too. Oh, we'll look for it. Yeah. To be properly displayed in your living room. <laughs> I, I don't know. This is probably not a bad place if the board wanted to, you know, make a comment. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Sal, and and board. <laughs> Appreciate and, it. And, and we're going to now turn it back to you to do the the second two. Yes, so we are also going to honor our very own Morgan Simmons, who is graduating this year, who uh, I got to sit next to most of the year before we had to start doing these Zoom meetings. <laughs> you think she's graduating? She's, we haven't conferred graduation yet. Yeah, you don't have your diploma yet. <laughs> anything else we need her to do? <laughs> You've done a great job, and we really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Morgan. We really Thank wish you, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Do you have a final decision what, what you're doing next year? Um, next year in the well, in the fall, I'm going to SUNY Oneonta to do accounting and business. So yeah. Go Red Dragons. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good luck with that. Thank you. Okay, and now we're also going to we want to mention. Um, Winnie Legier, a former board member who has served on the Chatham Public Library Advisory Committee for the last two years, I believe. Um, thank you very much, Winnie. I know you're not in attendance, but we really appreciate everything she's done for this district. And uh, yeah, we have a certificate for Winnie that will mail her as well. Okay, I'm sure that will go above her mantle also. Okay. Um, Okay, so we are moving on to board comment. Do any board members want to make a comment at this moment? Anybody? Okay. If we are good um, to move. No, I'm I, Rachel. I, I raised Beth, you all set? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, I'm sorry, Beth. You were I I you were off the screen there. Go ahead, Beth. Okay. Um, a couple of things that I'd like to suggest. Um, really, in our public, our school board meetings lately, we haven't had a place for public comment the way we have during our, our you know, like the handbooks that we just went over or the um, code of conduct. Meeting. Yeah. So I, I think that might be something we might want, might want to consider going forward. And I, I believe you will. So that was due to the executive order. I think it's executive order 202 that expires on June 26th. So that's been for the last three months, that executive order. And then starting in July, I believe you'll go back to that. Is that correct, Sal? It is. And, and as a board, we're going to have to discuss what the future meetings look like. Many districts beginning um, this month have gone back to some modified face-to-face um, but your point is well taken, Beth. Uh, I think they may be going face to face, socially distanced, but I still don't know if they're allowing the public. We might have to figure out how the public comes in remotely. So th that is something that the board will have to take into consideration. Okay. And I have one other comment I'd like to make. Um, I know that it, as the as school year is r wrapping up, you, we've all been talking, you know, you've been talking with the administrators and the teachers and the TAs and all about how you know how su their successes and the things that they think they might want to work on further i was wondering and thinking that it might be a good idea if we could do some kind of a survey monkey to go out to the parents to see what kind of experience they and their children have had in the virtual learning time absolutely um, i'm sure anytime we can or anytime that we can get um feedback from from our parents and our students um, I think that's a valuable data point. So we can we can work on that. I know that I think there's some models out there from other districts. 
Okay. I'm going to make also make some comments during one of my um, superintendent's reports about um, some preliminary work for next year. Was there anything else, Seth? No, that's all. Okay. Does anybody else? Let me scroll through. Okay. No other comments? Um, then we are going to hand it back over to Dr. D'Angelo for the superintendent report, starting with the year in progress briefing on the current goals and action items. Okay, I just need to go back to share. Okay. So a couple general comments before I get into my three areas, which are to give a little bit of an update on the year-end uh, progress on year-end goals and action items, talk a little bit about the professional development plan that we typically have our professional development people do uh, in person in the past, and a little bit of preliminary information on some of the conversations um, that we're having uh, in anticipation of next school year, and specific to that, um, some of the challenges in terms of guidance that we, we need to move forward as well. So needless to say that the last time I spoke uh, to the goals and action items was um, January before uh, our world uh, kind of was turned upside down and um, we were making some decent progress um, on, on some of these. And I'm going to just throw up a slide where I'm going to do what I've done in the past, which is we have some detailed spreadsheets that include um, our four goals, our fiscal, our wellness, our academic, and our safety. And then if you recall for the benefit of people, oh, that's not, sorry, I got too big here. Um, for the benefit of those who don't understand our structure, not on the board, but the people viewing, we have um, something called priority objectives. We've identified uh, over the last couple of years, a minimum of three priority objectives under each of these big four categories. And then uh, typically in the summer, the administrative team sits and starts to develop through the summer and fall action items to help us reach those objectives. And then we track those to see how we're making progress. And um, we it, it last reported to the board in January and um, fully expected to have made some progress on some of those items uh, between now and then. Of course, COVID came along and derailed this on, on many, but not all, of um, some of our um, action items and objectives. What I've done is similar in, in the past is I'm not taking you painstakingly through line by line all those spreadsheets. Uh, we will post it on the drive in the coming days. But what I did in January and I thought I'd do this evening is just pick a few from each of the categories to give you some highlights. Um, our fiscal goal uh, had always been very um, uh, oriented to the capital project and the maintenance of our facilities. So, um, and the, the fiscal stability of the district and our reserve planning and all the wonderful work that the uh, finance committee has done over the last few years. And so um, some of the highlights would be the fact that we prepared under very difficult um, fiscal conditions um, and passed, thankfully to the community, a budget for the 2021 school year. Um, we, as part of that budget, uh, development and budget planning. Uh, we did a lot of fiscal planning around our long-range staffing, something the board had charged me with, uh, or the finance committee had charged me with, is a plan of how we're going to look over the next few years. You know, we all have acknowledged that our enrollment is shrinking, and thus we need to kind of right size. So the administrative team and I um, spent probably a couple months, just under a couple months, talking about how we would right size from a staffing perspective. Um, we remember that there's uh, the two key words tonight uh, are flexibility and ambiguity. And what I mean by that is, although we've made it past this first little um, obstacle of the passing of the school budget, which this year we did uh, solely by the absentee ballot, um, which went, you know, after we got them out, after all the districts got them out, it went reasonably well. Um, and we passed the budget. The, the next thing that, the, um, that we have to plan for is what the governor is going to do in terms of 
these look back periods. And we've already been through one look back period. The next one ends on June 30th. And, um, and then the next one ends on, on December 30th. We just don't know, right? He's indicated that we could be looking at anywhere up to, at one point he said 50%, then it was downgraded to about 20% reduction in um, state aid. And it's worth spending a couple minutes on this because this is really what may have the most impact on us this coming year. And that is, um, I don't know whether the look back period is gonna be coincident to any federal action that's taken to help the states um, mitigate the financial difficulties. New York is in um, terrible financial straits. Last I heard it's well over $60 million. That money um, to become whole is gonna to have to come from somewhere. And we're just making assumptions at this point, thinking that the governor is waiting to see what the federal government does. And depending on what they do will impact us. If they come through, it is an election year and they um, supplant the, the um, state with money, um, this may be not as bad as we anticipate. If they don't, as the governor has indicated, the money is going to come out of three areas, healthcare, government, and schools. And 20% to us equates to somewhere in the vicinity of 900000 to a $1 million, which on a budget that's about 70 plus percent staffing, um, it's logical that we would have to um, potentially impact staffing and potentially impact it which is never ideal um, either before the school year begins or during the school year. So some of this is a wait and see, but um, I pontificated a little bit because we have a plan, a confidential plan that will help us navigate that. It's a contingency plan should we have to execute it at various levels to help us get to where we need to go um, to provide quality of services that we're accustomed to here in Chatham. Um, we also, um, you know, there are some things in that plan that were a little bit of a, a disappointment. We didn't execute the development of a facilities plan to the fidelity that we had expected. Um, we're not gonna look back. As you know, uh, I think last meeting, you um, uh, um, uh, approved the hiring of a new facilities director. That director starts on July 1st. One of their priorities, probably of many, um, is, and this gentleman does have experience in this area, will be to take a look as to where that was left off and how we can get to where we are now to where we want to go um, in, in short order. And, you know, having a maintenance plan is going to help us inform future decisions and, and prioritize future work. We also, way back when, um, knew that we were on the tail end of a phase two of a project and we knew that in that project we couldn't address all of the items that we wanted to address. And so we've made the facilities committee has met once um, in the last six months to take a look at the gap, the items that never made it to the capital project and or items that have presented themselves since to get a sense for where uh, we may need to go in the future. I think given the current fiscal um, landscape, we want, to be, we want to proceed very cautiously um, and that may not be on as fast a track as, a track as we had originally thought. Um, but we are in phase two of the capital project. If COVID has any upside at all, the school closure did allow us to start, accelerate the mobilization or mobilization of the crews. Um, they are already on site. You can, if you pass by the middle school or the high school, you might be able to painfully see that um, the work is well underway. That has a benefit. The benefit is that we hope that that will keep us on schedule because if you remember, um, it is very critical that we close this project out early fall and Mike can submit uh, all the submittals so that we make sure that our aid flows the next year. There's a timing concern there and we believe that being able to start the capital projects early is going to help us in that regard. Um, is, well, is Denise still on? Yes, I am. Okay, good. Um, in wellness, uh, last year about this time we approved, the board approved an expenditure, expenditure to have um, a couple independent consultants come in and help <coughs> take a look at our special education program, the continuum of services, um, how we are staffed in the area of uh, pupil personal services, so um, school counseling, social work, um, school psychology. And they, um, I'm very pleased, and I think I may have mentioned this, maybe not at the last report, we had tremendous participation. Our teachers, our administrators, our teachers, our teaching aides, 
Uh, our teaching assistants, our aides, were all tremendously cooperative uh, with the evaluators. Um, they they um, uh, uh, got a lot of data points, a lot of interviews, a lot of information. Um, the, the, pro, the plan is a three-phase plan, and it's really at the end of phase three that we were going to realize the full report, which we had expected to have by now. But because of the closure, phase three could not move forward. It, it was a lot of um, classroom observations and uh, additional um, surveying. So phase three has been pushed off to the fall, but that doesn't mean that it hasn't been fruitful. The um, lead evaluator and I have met on several occasions. She's given me some preliminary data that's helped inform uh, our decision making. In fact, uh, at the last board meeting, the last couple board meetings, we eliminated a counselor at the elementary school and we hired a school psychologist. Actually, I believe the hire is on tonight's, um, we interviewed uh, some amazing candidates uh, and we were able to um, get an acceptance from our top candidate. Um, the, the, um, resolution is on tonight's agenda to um, to approve her to join our team. The administrative team and I have met on several occasions and we're finalizing the plan to slightly restructure uh, or better align, I should say, um, our re human resources, our PPS resources to our student need. Um, the student needs have changed over the years and that was primarily the justification for making this modification. This is probably going to could hear this in almost any of these categories. The other concern, deep concern that we have as an administrative team is we don't fully know and maybe can't even comprehend the impact that this closure has had on our students, their social, emotional, and mental well-being. Um, most superintendents, both school administrators um, are anxiously awaiting um, you know, what we do in the fall and how we bring students back and how we deal with some of the emotional trauma that ha could be a result of everything that we've been through. So, um, you know, we, that, that does, has not fallen on deaf ears. We know that that has got to be one of the top priorities because if we don't have students who are here or even remote ready to learn and present, what we try to teach them is, um, is you know, uh, counterproductive. So that's the, the, the fiscal goal. Um, uh, I'm sorry, that was part of the wellness goal. We also, you know, um, celebrated the first half of the year with um, Kristen and her team bringing the Bright program. And, and um, we, you know, we got a half a year in. We think that has a lot of promise. That's where we have a school counselor and a teaching assistant uh, helping get students who quickly need to be, have some behavioral issues, quickly re-regulated or regulated and back to the classroom. So the disruption in time is minimized and then they can have a better continuity of learning. Um, we also set out, had a goal, and I kept this on here because it was kind of entertaining to some extent. We had a goal of improving student absenteeism. Um, you know, if you walk into MED, you've got that wonderful sign that was tracking student attendance. Um, the assistant principals uh, and principals, but you know, uh, Justin Forrest and, and, um, and Brett, uh, did a wonderful job sending home letters with parents and having conversation to really try to get kids here. Kind of the same idea, if the kids aren't here and we're not in contact with them, we can't teach them, they're not gonna grow, they're not gonna have the success. So, you know, with, with COVID coming along, the building's closed, and next year not knowing what um, our plan will look like yet, and the fact that we don't know how comfortable parents will be in sending children despite whatever plan we have, um, student absenteeism will probably take a different, I'll have to take a different approach to that next year. Um, we also, a particular note, had done that wonderful survey last year, that climate survey, and we had, and Matt, you said on the wellness committee, we had so hoped to, to administer that um, survey again this year so that we had some, some data points to look and compare to, but given the situation uh, and the disruption to the environment, we felt it was frugal, frugal to, futile. To, to do that. So we did not re-administer that. We do hope to do that um, in the future. Uh, under academic, um, a number of, um, of goals that um, we have will be pushed forward a little bit. A couple of key comments to, to make here is remember that the entire testing program was abandoned this year. So the traditional state test three through eight and all of the regions um, did not take place. Um, they are not the only, but they are one important data set that we use. Uh, we won't have that uh, available to us to inform our decision making. 
part of the summer retreat with the administrators is to take a look at that data and to have that partially inform our decision making when it comes to setting academic goals. Now, thankfully though, we do have some local assessments. We have iReady and SRI and a number of other tools that we will have to use to try to determine where students are. And in addition to their social emotional well-being and the impact that COVID, the COVID closure has had on them, our second biggest concern is to figure out where they are academically and what interventions we're gonna to have to um, put in place to try to get them back um, on track. Now, some probably have not lost a step. Parents have done a wonderful job as, their, as teachers to their students, but we also know that that's, the equity there may not be um, the same, and we need to make sure that we can properly assess the students and move forward regardless of the plan. You know, it'd be great to have all of our students back um, like normal in the fall, that's probably less than likely. And so we have to find a way, whether they're here physically, part of the time or none of the time, how we assess their learning uh, moving forward and where they are and what they need. Um, and I will tell you that the administrators have a concern in a time where we may have an increase for intervention services and student supports, we're going through what could be a, a very tough uh, fiscal time. So we're gonna have to be creative um, because the students deserve that. They don't deserve this large gap in their education. Um, summer curriculum projects, they're on tonight's agenda. Um, we kept an eye towards um, prioritizing those projects that look to see how we can improve our remote learning. Uh, those projects that were focused on uh, standards that will be changing, although some of that's being delayed. Um, and we have a number of quality projects, the school of the building principals, the administrators took a look at those projects, vetted them, approved them, and that's what you're looking at tonight. Tonight's just the approval of the project. Don't forget that once the project's over, we're gonna present that back to you for um, approval um, in the fall. Uh, so you'll have a chance to see those projects and see what they, they, they come. Um, tonight, we, we had a conversation about the district, um, district-wide safety plan. This year, we made some major strides. Um, you know, we brought in the Edom Risk Management as a consultant. We had some very um, um, clear building and student safety goals this year. I think we made some pretty nice progress up until the closure on them. Our, our building level safety plans are much improved from the past. Um, the principals were just about to have building level safety team meetings locally. Um, that didn't come to fruition, um, but we'll have to you know, do that once we're back together physically. I would say that safety and security took a little bit of a backseat, admittedly because we didn't have any students here. Um, and so we, we can't lose sight of that. That was a top priority, it was one of our big priorities going into this. And so we need to make sure that that continues once we um, come into some sort of normalcy. Uh, we will continue to do tabletop top exercises next year. Um, we had also planned to do some walkthroughs of the physical um, campus and some exiting, not to get into too many details about our emergency plan, but some of that, um, again, was um, uh, delayed because of the, the closure. Um, and we still had uh, talked about a pilot. Uh, we purchased some additional security cameras to do an in-house project, and we that kind of fell a little bit off. Um, schedule that's going to go back on schedule this summer. Uh, IT department is um, securing some wiring uh, bids, and we hope to have that back um, on track. So again, I, I did take a few minutes. I just tried to pick and choose some selected highlights um, and, and acknowledge the fact that you know COVID threw us a little curveball um, where we could continue forward on some of the items we did. The administrators and I are, are in the process of selecting a retreat date. We typically meet mid to end of July, and that's where we're going to spend a significant amount of time this year, taking a look at all of these, um, seeing which ones need to be pushed forward, see which ones were accomplished and can come off, and then also which what, what new action items need to be added to reach our goals. So that's kind of just a um, maybe not so quick update, but I didn't want to shortchange the board on um, at least knowing where we are right now. I do have. Um, the, the principals have joined us as a panelist. They're, they're listening in. Um, you know, if we were in person like last June, we would have had to given, given you a full end of the year review. Um, but if you have any specific questions, they're here to support the administrative team as well. Are there any questions? 
Comments? Okay. Then I guess we will move on to the professional development plan update. Thank you. We're done. Um, let me move this back to slide one. So typically, Donna Eager would be with you to give you um, her annual report on the professional development plan. But and and I'm just going to make some some preliminary some brief comments. Um, we have an amazing professional development committee. Um, it is uh, it, it contains teachers, administrators, uh, teacher leaders, uh, a true cross section of stakeholders that weigh in on formulating a plan to better meet the needs of, of our teachers. Um, with that said, they always go back and they analyze what has happened the year before. They generally align their uh, activities to the board goals and priority objectives. So last year, um, they created guiding questions that were around our goals of instruction, wellness, and community. Um, they took a look at programs that we instituted, the Instructional Innovation Coach, a very successful program, our psychologist coach, um, um, and, and some activities around family engagement. And they then reviewed um, the plan and they come up with a whole new plan for this year. Um, why I'm pausing and going back to the word flexibility and ambiguity, um, as much as we have a plan in place, I think to suggest that we actually know what our professional development plan will look like today would be a little misleading, mainly because I think it's going to change dramatically. It's going to change dramatically once we make a determination as to what next year um, is going to look like and what our teachers are going to need to better support our students. Remember, it would uh, shout out to all the teachers who were thrust into a new environment that for many was very foreign and they did it within a few days. And we managed, right? We got through, we thought it was gonna be a few weeks and then a few more weeks and before you knew it, it was three months. So be it. We had an approach that was, let's try to do the best we can um, and do right by our students, not hold them, um, hold them harmless for the fact that they are learning in a much different modality than they've ever been uh, accustomed to. However, I do want to, and this kind of be part of my comments um, with the future too, acknowledge the fact that it was far from perfect. Um, you know, we, it was fraught with a lot of challenges, um, all of which we've gotten really good feedback. So Beth, you should know that we did um, do an exhaustive survey with the, the teachers. They have provided us a tremendous amount of feedback on their experience. So it makes logical sense that you've suggested we reach out to parents and students as well. Um, the feedback that we got has now been vetted by the teacher leaders and they're kind of, and, we, and we've got some really good stuff to inform our decision making forward. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the, in the comments. So as much as we have a, an existing professional development plan, it's attached to your, um, uh, your agenda uh, for the board. Um, I wanna be very careful to say that we wanna provide the best development that our teachers are gonna to need to be successful next year. And with that, we know that we need to raise the bar on engagement, student engagement, uh, facilitation of remote learning, uh, and, and other aspects that I'll, I'll, I'll mention in my next comments. Any questions or concerns about the current plan um, as it exists? And I noticed Beth has her hand up right now, so. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> you know what it is? I think that's still up. Still up I, think but let me, I think I can lower all hands. There we go. I cleared it in case. So, are we good there? Or? Um, You're good now. No yeah. hands up. <laughs> okay. And and so my last next year comment. Yeah. So so uh, for those and I think we have we have um, let's 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 leave this screen up. Um, you know we have a, a small number of attendees tonight. I see some teachers and some uh, administrators, some others. What I was just about to, what I was starting to say is. You know, it was far from perfect, right? And the feedback we got um, involved that um, perhaps some of the remote learning was not rigorous enough. Um, we didn't maybe as use effect as effectively use video as we could. Um, it didn't. It, it kind of lacked some structure. Um, not only did the would the parents appreciate that, but I think the students thrive better when the structure. Um, we didn't really have a really good 
And again, please understand because you, you, you see what's happening in Chatham, but understand we're not alone. I'm not making excuses, but many, if not most, all districts have struggled with some of the same, you know, challenges. I, you know, I sit on the Quest R3 Superintendents Committee and we have, you know, uh, at one point we were having three meetings a week. Uh, we're now down to weekly meetings. We talk about all these same items, right? We're not, we're not unique necessarily in Chatham. All the same things that I'm telling you have been challenges with other districts. Um, and we're trying to take a collaborative approach. If they did something that worked well, uh, they found a the best practice, we're sharing because we want to borrow it. We want to learn from each other. So that, that's really um, the part of this next month, month and a half, that's going to be important. But we know we need to, and, and, and teachers acknowledge it as well in the survey and in the, the data that we've, um, we've acquired tells us that, you know, students need more structure. Students need, uh, you know, we, we held, we had a, a C and an I for a complete or incomplete. It can't continue like that, right? We will have to have a grading structure so students have feedback in terms of their performance. And we can't hide behind those students who um, potentially use this um, to, you know, there's those students who have access issues and, and there's other challenges, but there are students who clearly said, listen, I'm not going to school. I, it's an excuse to hide behind it too, right? So we have to hold, there's gotta be a higher degree of accountability. We know all that. And in the structures that we're going to build for next year that will all be taken into consideration. So with that said, I've gotten about a half a dozen um, ask the superintendent emails from parents pretty much all asking and stating the same thing, some of which I just mentioned. Um, but what I really wanted to go on record as saying is that we will have to develop parallel paths. We have um, what we see, and I did send out a communication to all of our parents on Friday to try from a higher level, higher level kind of explain some of this um, because there are so many details that are just unknown. We know that we need to, you know, there's three scenarios that we're gonna be under, right? The 30,000 foot view is either, we're all coming back and we're all gonna be together like we were in the past, very unlikely. We're not coming back and we're all gonna be remote. Well, we know what that looks like. We just have to get better at delivering the services or it's gonna be some hybrid, which is highly likely. If we continue phase four coming up in, in early July, it's likely that the expectation is going to be that we have a hybrid. Now. This is the important part for those who aren't um, necessarily um, up to date with this every day. As much as I'd like to think that S Superintendent D'Angelo has um, uh, this wields this this power, um, I really only have control over a few uh, snow days. Um, I have no control over saying that our students can learn from home remotely um, solely. Um, I can't even say that they can learn half time home and half time at school that all has to be guidance that comes by way of regulation or law from the state education department or the governor's office or both so i know that that's that that's where that it's very difficult because parents want answers as to what we're going to do and we're making contingency plans we're building scenarios but the scenarios are only going to be a good and we have to because the timing on this is going to be um, critical but we have to wait um, until we have clear guidance as to what we're going to be allowed to do. And to put that into perspective, and this is a scary thought, the, all the different task force that have been formed, other, either by the governor's office or by the education department, are meeting in the next few weeks. And it's reported that they're not going to report out to, to the Board of Regents until July 13th. And that it may be at least a few more weeks before any clear cut guidance comes from these agencies as to what we can do or not do in uh, at the start of school. It doesn't leave us a lot of time for all the myriad of challenges in terms of transportation, um, our facilities, uh, temperature checks, all the, the probably hundreds and hundreds of items of things that we need to talk about and the administrators and I uh, have begun to talk about. So please rest assured that this is a daily conversation. Um, this is top priority. Um, we need to figure out a way to safely educate our students um, and uh, assure their parents that if we are going to have students physically in the buildings, that when they're here, we're taking the precautions to the extent that you know, the CDC and others recommend so that we can keep them safe. Um, I, I, I never want to set ourselves up for 
um, low expectations. I just think that next year is going to be challenging because there's a lot that we just don't know. Um, and we, we may very well be dealing with it um, as we as we go forward. You know, we could come back to school and we could, you know, have a, a, a rise in cases and, and maybe we're out for a few weeks. We just don't know. But we, I guess the answer is that we have to be prepared for pretty much all those different likely scenarios because by the time we have to make that decision, there isn't going to be a time to figure it out. Um, so I just urge our parents who might watch this in a video to um, be a little patient with us. We will communicate. We will over communicate. We, we will be very transparent um, with our plans. We will, um, as, as Beth has suggested, and uh, we will um, elicit feedback. Uh, your partners, you've been partners throughout this whole process with us. We cannot be successful without you. Um, but rest assured that um, I don't think a night goes by where I don't lay in bed thinking about one aspect of, of what we're going to confront ourselves with. So with that, I'll open, um, you know, I know there wasn't a lot of detail in that explanation, but I, I just really wanted to assure people that it, it's, if, you don't, if you're not necessarily hearing a well-defined plan, it's not because uh, we don't want to come up with one. It's just we're, we're waiting on details. So I'll open it up. Um, is it okay if I open it up for questions, Rachel? Um, yes, go ahead. Does anyone have their hand up? And, and I'll, the administrative team, if anybody wants to chime in, Mike, Lucas, Kristen, John, um, or Mike Burns, um, certainly welcome. We Anyone? Okay, if there's no questions or comments, we sure there's none here? Okay, then we thank you very much, Dr. D'Angelo, for all those updates. We will move on in our agenda to old business. R56, be it resolved that the Board of Education adopt policies 5661 wellness and 5662 physical wellness as read at the April 21st, 2020 and May 19th, 2020 board meetings. May I have a motion? Motion. May I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? I just wanna say this wellness policy was uh, like a year and a half in the making, and I'm very happy how it turned out. And thank you to the teachers and administrators who collaborated with us to develop it. And uh, for, for Pat, who uh, you know put in a lot of hours with me on this committee to make it happen. So thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to new business. R57, be it resolved that the Board of Education accept the results of the 2020 to 2021 annual budget vote, an election held on June 16, 2020, as reported by Deborah Pottenberg, District Clerk and Chairperson of the annual meeting as listed below. May I have a motion? Motion. May I have a second? Second. Questions or comments? I just have a comment. Uh, you know, it was told to me that we sent out uh, a lot of uh, ballots, which I was unaware of, and it kind of seemed odd that we got the normal amount back. So I don't, I don't know what to make of that, but uh, I, I, I thought it was curious when uh, Sal told us how many had to go out, and I wondered what that was going to look like. So I'm really glad, and uh, that everything went the way it did. I think we got double the normal amount, didn't we? We got 1,600 back. Yeah, it wasn't quite double, but to – Sal, what was the number you had to send out? Well, we sent out just about 7,600, and we got back, I think, um, 1,795, Deb just said, 1,795. So, um, you know, we, the average for many of the districts that we talked to was just about 2X. And I think one of our, big, our biggest elections, a good turnout here, is about 800 voters. So, you know, we're roughly around, you know, twice the in-person um, turnout. Great. And congratulations to uh, Pat and Matt for going on another term and uh, to Destiny Hallenbach, who will be joining us as well. Um, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'd also like to thank Debbie for all the work she did on that um, Yes. And that 
you know, all those yeah. all the stuff she had to do for that election. Thank you, Muriel. I, I'm remiss in, in Debbie has spent, I know, you know, part of it's her job, but boy, if she hasn't, I'm guessing two, three times the amount of time. Um, yeah. she, was here, she was here on weekends again. She was here late nights. Um, she really made it happen. So, and, and the um, people from the Board of Elections, our election, election inspectors, who that evening helped us make sure that everything uh, went well and was, you know, transparent. We streamed it. Um, I think it, it all, when all is said and done, even after a little bit of a panic about our ballots uh, not coming out of the printer for a few days and finding out that that was a statewide issue anyway, um, all in all, it turned out pretty well. And if you notice in the NISPA stuff, 99% of the budgets across the state passed. So communities around um, were very supportive of their schools. Thank you to everyone who helped out with that and to the community. Um, okay, so I'm moving on to R58, whereas the Chatham Central School District participates in the New York State Teachers Retirement System, and whereas on November 24, 2009, the Board of Education of the Chatham Central School District by resolution established a retirement contribution reserve fund pursuant to Section 6R of the General Municipal Law, and whereas the Board of Education has determined it is also appropriate to establish a sub-fund within said retirement contribution reserve fund pursuant to Section 6R of the General Municipal Law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of Chatham Central School District, pursuant to Section 6R of the G General Municipal Law, as listed below, establishes the CRS Reserve. May I have the motion? Motion. May I have second. a second? Second. Questions or comments? Mike is prepared to just make a couple brief um, comments, if you'd like, just to explain what this really is. Okay, go ahead, Mike. Yep, so we had the retirement contribution reserve established in 2009 that was allowed for ERS or non-instructional uh, salaries only. Um, so they've been actually NISBA and ASBO have been fighting for this for, I don't know, 10, 12 years. So Cuomo signed in. He's allowing for teacher retirement system payments also. Um, so that's why we talked about this in finance committee. We want to add this. Um, there's two caveats. You can do 2% of the TRS salaries from the previous year is the most you can put in each year and then up to 10% total. But this will be this will fit very well in our finance reserve plan, so that's why we're recommending doing this. Okay, does anyone have any questions or comments regarding it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Moving on to consensus agenda, R59, be it resolved that the Board of Education accept the consensus agenda K through M as written. May I have a motion? Motion. May I have a second? Second. second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Do we have any items for future agenda? Uh, I, I have an item I'd like to propose quickly. Okay, go ahead, Matt. Um, so Sal uh, sent home a communication to our, our parents, uh, maybe that was via Facebook, uh, regarding some of the um, uh, diversity and inclusion um, agenda that's um, working its way through American culture right now. Um, and I, you know, I, I took a moment to think about, you know, what what are we doing as as a district? Um, you know, we're not a very diverse district. Um, this means we have to work extra hard um, to to make sure we we're doing um, the right thing at the right time. You know, I, I looked at our policies. We've got um, dignity for all students and equal opportunity and non discrimination policies. These are mostly um, driven based on law. Um, even even the definition of discrimination is probably um, much too um, narrowly defined uh, in terms of what we have in policy. So, um, you know, I, I'd like to see something proactive, not reactive, you know, the way our policies are written. Um, I'd like to have some evidence of whether we're doing a good or a bad job, um, or more importantly, what we could be doing better. Um, and, um, and that's, that's, you know, I, I've got some specific thoughts, which is that, 
you know, um, if we were um, a private company out in the world, we would be looking at making sure that we have um, staff diversity reporting, um, perhaps even a student diversity report. Um, uh, we'd be doing unconscious bias training. Um, we'd be doing diversity listening sessions. Um, so some of these things may be happening to some extent, but if a community member asked me, what are we doing today? Um, I could not answer um, that we are doing the best we could be doing here. So I know there's a lot going on this year and we did some amazing work with the wellness agenda over the last few years. Um, but I'd like to table a diversity and inclusion agenda uh, for the coming uh, year. So for, for like update, like what we're doing both as a policy sector, I think also just to build on what you're saying, um, to maybe like, could I, I know that like the teachers are, you know, we're an educational institution and I'm sure they're, they're teaching uh, up to date, you know, up to date uh, lessons within, including lessons within their planning and everything, maybe like an insight of, um, where we I mean, are specifically, I mean, it, how this is being, how this is being uh, addressed within the school. Yeah, I mean, if, if this was a conversation in a private organization um, and we were doing the social governance that is now um, commonplace, um, diversity reporting, bias training and listening sessions are standard. Um, as far as I know, we're not doing any of those things. So, yes, some policy work, but also I want to know that we're doing stuff. Um, so this is, this would be a long process to get to a place where I would say, yes, we're doing the best we could do, um, but we have to start someplace. So maybe some reporting to start off on what are we doing, um, and then figure out where the, where the, do some gap analysis to understand, you know, what is, what is best in class right now? You know, this predates most of us on the board, but we lost a whole category of students some years ago because they didn't feel included. They went off and started their own school. Um, so we've got some track record of failure here. Um, and I would like to see that, you know, we're, we're thinking about how that, you know, won't happen again, can't happen again here. Okay. So um, I guess first we'll start with diversity reporting on what we're doing and the gap analysis as a presentation. Like I just want to, yeah. before I get consensus, just clearly define what the future yeah. agenda is. Yeah, I think um, I think perhaps this is for the district to propose a diversity and inclusion agenda, um, and maybe we start there. I don't want to narrow down and say this is a report or this is a policy. Um, I just, you know, generally want to say as, as a board member that the district is, along with all the other priorities we have, um, <laughs> that this is another priority. <laughs> okay. I, I got to say, Matt, um, I think Sal summed it up a few years back um, with everyone every day. And if that doesn't, you know, uh, sit, sit well with you and we need to go further, then uh, um, I don't know what else we can do. But everyone every day means it all. But, you know, so. Well, I think first in this so. department, just get a baseline of what we're doing. Yep. More what future agenda is for. Okay. So do we want to go around and get consensus to place that on the future agenda? On what? On the future agenda list. Does everybody understand what's being asked for? I guess is that? No. Okay. He's being asked for kind of to look into what we're doing in the diversity sector. Like what are we doing as a district, both in policy and procedure and curriculum, kind of an overview of it first, and then any gap analysis or discussions that would come from that? Is that correct, Matt? Yeah, I mean, specifically, you know, you talk about diversity, which is the differences, right? But then you also talk about inclusion and, and what are we doing about that? And, and those two things go together. So that's the agenda um, in any in any uh, privately held large organization, diversity and inclusion is an area of corporate governance. But, you know, we are not we are not a corporation. We are not a private, uh, you know, we're not a private company. And I take a little. Um, uh, when you said about 
a whole group of people that we did not um, serve, and they left and started their own school. What was what? I certainly don't remember something like that. That a whole people uh, from our school they left and started their own school. Um, it's it's perhaps um, not central to the point here, um, but I do understand that we we lost. Um, we we have a private school that started a few years ago in our district. I mean, it was in response to the students that had moved into the district not feeling included culturally. Well, whatever that incident is, yeah. let's stick to whether or not we put this yeah. on the future agenda, okay? Does anyone have any questions about what Matt's future agenda proposal is? Let's start there. Are there any other questions on that? Okay, then I'll just go around and get consensus to put it on the future agenda list, okay? Um, I'm just gonna go down the list. Yes. Um, I, I, I totally agree. And I remember not so much a group of kids that left, but I re remember some incidences when my kids went through school that I had to work through. Okay, so Beth is a yes. Craig. I'm not real clear what he wants us to dig into, and I'm a no. Okay, Craig's a no. Okay, um, Muriel. No. Okay, Meg. Unsure. Unsure, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Um, Matt, uh, Matt, you proposed it, so I'm putting you on the yes side. Pat? I'm kind of virgin, um, on no, because I really think cells, every student, every day, is kind of meets what Chatham, Chatham's approach to this whole issue. Um, so I guess I, I would say no. I think we we're, we're already somewhat addressed it. Okay, Denise? Baseline. I think it's important in its own way, but I think uh, in the school community, if we can emphasize respect all around the block and so on, which I believe that we do, I see I would go with a vote of no for this. Okay? Um, hang on, I'm missing someone here. Graham, are you still there? I'm still here. Okay, I don't see you on the list anywhere, but um, go ahead. My name is Rachel on here because I didn't receive a link, so I went in through your link. Oh, okay. Rachel with an A, A L. <laughs> okay, Rachel, go ahead. Uh, I'm an absolute yes. I, I frankly don't understand why we would not, uh, why anybody would be against doing something like this. I think it's important for us to look at uh, an, an analysis of how we are making sure that uh, we are uh, have curriculum that is teaching about uh, diversity and inclusion, that we have people that are going through uh, not like uh, uh, bias training, things like that. I think it's absolutely important. Okay, so you are a yes. Okay. Um. Uh, I'd like to make a follow-up comment um, before we tally votes, if that's okay. Okay, go ahead. Uh, um, I've just been voted in for three more years. Mm -hmm. um, I will I will bring back a specific proposal and I will floor it every meeting until it's considered. Okay, thanks for that threat. Um, I would also vote yes. Somehow I'm coming up with four and four though. Who am I missing? Uh, Megan was trying to speak again, if that was oh, possible. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead, Nick, Meg. That's okay. So I apologize. So the proposal is just to have it put on. It's not stating that anything is do being done incorrectly. It's just strictly to put the um, yeah, so basically what so we to do put is the, the review on the on the agenda. So there would be a board presentation on what we're doing it is essentially what we do. So we put the um, what we do is we'll do a presentation and see the baseline, investigate what have we done with this, where are we at, and that would be the board presentation, and then from there have a discussion on, on whether there was a gap analysis or something, and then move forward 
So there's no action being taken. It's just a, a literal future agenda item, future agenda presentation on what we're doing. That's where we start. Can I, so I will change myself from an unknown to a yes. I okay. feel like you should. Okay, so we have five to four, so yeses win. Okay, so can you add that to the, who is it? De Debbie, do you add that to the list? Thank you. Okay, do we have any more? Any more future agenda items? Moving on to new topic. Okay. I, I'm sorry, did Mrs. Reno have her hand up? Or somebody just had their hand up. I'm good to move on, right? Okay. It was me, Rachel. Um, I, had my, I had my hand up. So okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to keep track of like the agenda and uh, the participants here. Okay, so right before adjournment here, I would like to say a few words because uh, this is my last meeting during this term. And um, I really just want you all to know that this last three years on the board has been an adventure that has added to my personal and professional growth in this journey of life. And it's really been quite a rewarding experience with you all. And there's been late nights, there's been three hour committee meetings, there's been contentious discussions. Um, we've produced a 500 page policy manual in 10 months. We did implementation of board governance, a handbook with operating procedures that are distinct to Chatham, um, implementation of a district wide planning process, operating procedures, streamlined committee operations, and augmented accountability. In the past three years, we've really overhauled how we have functioned as a body of nine. And in doing so, we've augmented our effectiveness and produced a really collaborative and cohesive dynamic. And it's been a great experience to get to this point. Um, I thank each of you on the board for being on this journey with me and all of the wisdom you have imparted. Um, the time you volunteer to the civic duty and the mental load that you carry to ensure the best for our Chatham students really needs to be recognized. Um, I think it's something, something that a lot of times is very thankless and it's hard to get people to run for the board. And, you know, I just want people to know that everyone here does a lot and gives it their all. And I've been really proud to have done that all with you. Um, Dr. D'Angelo, you have proven you are a level-headed and compassionate leader, and you have my utter confidence that you will lead our district to success and our students. And Mr. Chetty, I know your job is thankless as well, but I recognize, and I hope the community does as well, that your prudent planning has allowed this district to strategically maintain the integrity of our programming while being fiscally responsible to our taxpayers, and that's really an accomplishment in itself. I know a number of you on this board and in this community were a bit disappointed with my decision not to seek re-election, but most of you know that I had a three-year plan. And uh, I see Melanie Spock is in the attendance and she knows I have one. <laughs> it was a three-year plan and one thing that I'm good at is sticking to plans, making them and sticking to them. And in these three years, I have accomplished what I set out to do. I've gotten the experience I wanted. I've contributed everything in my skill set to make it happen. And uh, I'm looking forward to my next adventure. I have full confidence in this board and with the addition of Destiny Hallenbach, who is truly one of Chatham's finest, to continue to lead this district with integrity and professionalism. And I'm signing off tonight very content with this rewarding experience and proud to have been part of it. So I will always support you all in your roles as board members and hopefully as friends as well. And I hope we stay in touch. And uh, thank you for the last three years. It's been great. So can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. 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 Can I have a second? Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Good night. Good night.